In order to really understand a book, I believe that it's really important to understand the background information and the context. So one thing that we need to take into consideration is information about the author. Marjane Satrapi wrote Persepolis, and this book uh, is basically about her life and her experiences. So first we're going to watch this little video from YouTube where she's talking about Persepolis. My name is Marjan Satrapi. I'm Iranian and French because I'm living here since a long time. And I have started as a cartoonist. By coincidence, actually, I started to make comic books and then by coincidence, I started making films. Part of my work is based on the memories and feelings because I'm an exiled person and like any exiled person, I always go to the past. The things that touches me, that is the things that I have grown up with, that is, that is the things that is really, you know, it is on my skin. Everybody does that. Even the guys who make sci-fi movie, you know, with full of monsters and this thing, it comes from an internal fear. It comes from obsessions. It's, it comes from whatever is extremely personal. More or less everybody is the same. It's just uh, uh, our ignorance that makes that we believe that the other one is not like us. If we want to solve the problem, maybe we should invest more, more into school and education and art and culture rather than uh, investing into wars and bombs and weapons. In Persepolis, I made the film in animation because the drawing is something abstract. So anybody can identify to a drawing. So that was really a reason why I wanted to make it in animation and nothing else. The second movie that I made, uh, you know, it's, it's a love story that happens in the 50s. And, you know, all of us, we have loved someone. All of us, we have been heartbroken. Uh, and some of us, they have, we have died because of love. So I think uh, the subject itself is more universal. You know, I love popular art, and that is why also I make cinema. You know, I basically, based, my basis, basis come from painting. And then I made comic books because I wanted to make popular art because I didn't want, you know, to make some painting that go to some galleries and then some elite people, they would come and watch my paintings and that would be it. I wanted to make, I said, I can make something that would be popular and not stupid. It is possible to, get, to make something that everybody can read, but it's well made. And it was really for me a conviction. I wanted to do that. You know, the animation movie that we made, it was like completely hand-drawn. It's a very long, long procedure. In movie, you know, it, you, you know, you have nine weeks to shoot. You have to be on all the time. You have to be like full of energy. You're like there, you know, controlling it, the whole thing. So it's uh, much more intense. Really, making a movie is like you live three years in three months. So it's extremely intense, and uh, it's extremely exciting and enjoyable to to make a movie and it's extremely sad when it's over what is the best advice that i got in my professional life well you know i remember when i was uh, much younger like i was 19 something like that and i was very lazy and i'm still very lazy you know i always need you know to have a, a deadline to finish something and you know i so you know i went to this uh, you know graphic design course and you know i made a poster and my poster was really not bad and my teacher gave me the worst note of the whole class. And the other poster, they were really not good. And I told him, and I say, you know, the thing that I have done is, 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 it doesn't work that, you know. It's much better than this, that, that, and that. And why should I get the worst note of the class? And he said, you know, because you are very talented and you don't work. And he said, the talent without work doesn't lead anywhere. If you want to have, you know, something solid and construct something, then you have to be very serious and work. And the best thing is to never stop laughing and not to take too, all of that too much for serious. If I don't laugh one day, then I'm really, really, I have the feeling that I have missed one day. So, you know, every day I try to have at least a very good laughter. Okay. So when we meet together on Zoom, we will discuss... Uh, the similarities that you guys have with Marjane Satrapi. So since we're probably going to talk about this tomorrow, what I would recommend is for you to take some notes and see how you are similar to her, how you d are different, can you relate to her, and be prepared to share your feelings about this tomorrow or your reactions. 
So just so you guys have some background information, um, Marjane Satrapi grew up in Tehran to a family involved in communist and socialist movements in Iran before the Iranian Revolution. Uh, and there's a lot of connotation associated with communism and socialism, and we will be going over those terms more in depth uh, on a different video lecture so that you guys can better understand what they mean and so that everyone knows what the connotations are because it's important to know the background and um, opinions that we bring to what we read. Uh, as a child, she saw the growing suppression of civil, li civil liberties, meaning that she saw people get rights taken away, whether it's in how they dress, the music they listen to, what they can buy, etc. She experienced an Iraqi aid war, air war, excuse me, that killed her friend. And so death is really traumatic, and you will see that in the book as well. She does descend from Persian royalty. Uh, but she also points out that shahs, which are their word for king, had hundreds of wives, so many Persians or Iranians are descended from royalty. And then in 1983, she was sent to Vienna, Austria, by her parents so that she could escape from the Iranian regime. Um, but it was a more traumatic experience than anticipated. She was homeless, and then she nearly died of pneumonia, and that's why she went back home. So she's had quite the life experiences with uh, very serious illnesses, violence on the street, the loss of her friends, the loss of her own rights, uh, and that's a lot to go through. I mean, this is all when she was younger than you guys are, so that's a lot to take in. When she was 24, she moved to France, and she married um, a Swedish national. She speaks many languages, as you can see. So although in her video she talks about being lazy or procrastinating or not putting as much effort forth as she, po as she could, um, she still has accomplished a lot, and she's overcome a lot of adversity and hardships in a short period of time. 